cute to call Euroia lipolitica by its adorable nickname, Yali. Oh, little buddy. For over two years, I've worked with Yali for my PhD. My lab is full of Yali experts. We invent CRISPR tools to work with this oleaginous yeast. So today I'll share everything I know about transformations of Euroia lipolitica. Welcome to DIY Biotech. This chemical transformation procedure is so efficient that I'll get multiple transformants even with a dual plasma transformation. I've used this procedure for gene knockouts, gene integrations, and simple plasma transformations into YALI. If you're learning to work with YALI, or even if you've been working with YALI for years, this video is for you. My lab uses the PO1F strain which cannot produce leucine or uracil on its own. This means that plasmids transformed here must contain LU2 or a Ura3 gene to be successfully transformed. You may also be able to use a fungicidal marker here. To start, I grow some PO1F yeast for 16 to 24 hours. This can be done in rich media like YPD or in synthetic media. The growth time or source of your cells is very unimportant here. I've taken a culture that was sitting on my bench for two days, added a mill of YPD, grew for two hours in the incubator, and the transformation still worked. Transfer 250 microliters of this liquid culture to a 1.5 milliliter centrifuge tube. Spin at 4000 G for two minutes. Pour off the supernatant and resuspend in 250 microliters of transformation buffer. The recipe is here on the screen now. Spin again and pour off the supernatant. Resuspend the pellet in 100 microliters of the same transformation buffer. Add three microliters of SS DNA solution, add one microgram of plasma DNA, and finally add 15 microliters of BME solution in that order. Be sure to flick the tube between each addition of each component. The BME solution doesn't like to mix, so be sure to pipe it up and down until it's visibly mixed. Unlike E. coli transformations, these cells aren't very sensitive. If you're doing a dual plasma transformation, add one microgram of each plasma. Allow the transformed cells to sit for 30 minutes at room temperature. Add 150 microliters of 70% 3350 molecular weight polyethylene glycol or PEG. This solution likes to freeze at room temperature, so prepare in advance and warm the solution in a heat block or very briefly in a microwave. PEG also doesn't like to mix, so mix well with a pipette. Let the cells sit for another 30 minutes at room temperature. Next. Use a hot water bath or heat block to heat shock the cells at 37 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. Add one milliliter of sterile water and mix well. Spin cells for two minutes at 4000 G and then pour off the supernatant. Resuspend the pellet in one milliliter of selective media and add to a culture tube containing another one milliliter of selective media. I take a mental note of how turbid the solution is here. This tube needs to grow for two to four days to reach confluency. Once the liquid culture is mostly opaque, I do a 10 to the negative four or a 10 to the negative five dilution and plate. I use selective plates if I want to maintain the plasmid and I use YPD plates if I'm doing a CRISPR knockout or integration. Then I follow up with colony PCR to confirm transformations or integrations. This is a really simple transformation protocol with a super high efficiency. Check out the comments in the description for more details. If you have tips for working with Yali or if you have questions, leave them in the comments below.